are you a Muslim? Where did you get your name from? Those were the questions posed by immigration officials to the son of the late boxing legend Muhammad Ali earlier this month, when he flew into Florida from Jamaica after attending a Black History Month event. When Muhammad ibn Ali said he was a Muslim, authorities reportedly held him and questioned him for over two hours. Ali was traveling with his mother, Khalila Camacho Ali, the boxing great second wife and mother of his four oldest children. She was also detained. The incident occurred on February 7th, days after Trump signed the executive order banning people from seven majority Muslim countries. For more, we're joined here in New York by Mohammed ibn Ali and his mother, Khalila Camacho Ali, and their attorney, Chris Mancini. We welcome you all to Democracy Now! Thank you know, you. I just went to Montego Bay also last week. Really? I flew in uh, back to the United States, and no one asked me about my religion. Uh, Mohammed Ali Jr., or Mohammed ibn Ali, can you tell us what happened to you when you flew in from Montego Bay on February 7th? Yeah, we was all headed to baggage claim, and immigration pulled me aside and asked me a series of questions. The first question they asked me was, what's my name? The second uh, question was, where did I get my name from? And the third question was, what religion are you? And so I answered, uh, my name is Muhammad Ibn Ali. And I said, I got my name from my mother and father. They raised me. They gave me the names Muhammad Ali at birth, from birth. And I said, I'm Muslim. Obviously, I think they didn't believe me, so they took me into another room, the, the room in the back, and asked me the same series of questions. And so I, it really struck me as a surprise, shock, and awe because I'm, a, I'm an American citizen. So I don't see why he even stopped me in the first place. But what did he keep asking you there? Hmm? What did he keep asking you in the second room? Oh, they asked me the same questions as he pulled me aside. What's my name? Where did I get my name from? And what was my religion? And Khalila Kamacho Ali, what uh, you were both separated, right? Well, you you come in together. What happened mm -hmm. to you? We all came in together. We was in wheelchairs because. I can't stand on my legs. I don't he either. So it was like I said, we're we're together. That's my son over there. Keep him here with us because we're in a group. And they just ignored it and rolled him out. And I says, where is he going? Where's you taking my son? He says, he'll meet you on the other side. I didn't get. I didn't understand what was that about. And they said, and then so they told me to go around and go in another room. And I was going, why are they separating us? That's what sent the red flag. Obviously, something was in place. Whether they had a ban going or not, something was already in place for this action. So they asked me the same thing. Um, what did they ask you? Your name? Uh, he says, well, well, we know you're Muhammad Ali. Well, he says, well, okay. Well, where do you live? And uh, what is your religion? And I says, my religion? Are you kidding me? I said, that's a personal question. I said, is my papers in order? They said, what is your religion? I said, okay, I'll comply. And I said, I'm a Muslim. I totally was freaking out. <laughs> I go, what's going on? I didn't understand. I said, is my papers in order? We just want to ask you a few questions, that's all. You know, I mean, they were very kind, but they never said why they asked me a question. Now, apparently, since then, they have said um, that they uh, weren't stopping you because of your religion, Muhammad. Um, do you believe that? No, because if you didn't stop me for, because of my religion, why would you ask me what is my religion? <laughs> and That's, they I didn't explain why they were. Were you in that room with other people as well, or were you just being questioned there by yourself? There were other people in the room that was being questioned, but I was the only one, actually, Muslim and black in the room, so. Has this ever happened to you? This is the first time. Has this happened? And I've, and I've been to England, Manchester, England, uh, a year ago, and nobody approached me or asked me any question like that. And Kalila, come on. Well, I had just came back from Paris, France, two weeks earlier, and but I was alone, and they didn't bother me at all. But when I had my son with me, it totally changed. And Chris Mancini, your reaction when you were contacted and heard about this, and, and have you had any uh, 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 exchange with the uh, immigration officials since then? Well, we're thinking about um, 
trying to waive her privacy rights and demanding an A, an explanation from the custom service, and B, an apology. But as I'm sitting here, I'm listening to Kalila, I've got to laugh, because Kalila, the difference between what happened to Kalila and Muhammad is partly a difference between their personalities, which should not be a factor whatsoever in the way customs treats you. But Kalila is not the type of person to suffer fools gladly. When these guys basically, she recognized immediately that they were questioning her about stuff that she is constitutionally protected from having to answer. Uh, Muhammad gets dragged back there alone, and they're separated. And it was quite obvious to both of them that this was deliberate. Uh, some people have asked us, well, could this have been a rogue agent who just decided? No, this was two separate agents, actually two separate groups of agents. This was, as far as I can tell, having been a United States prosecutor for t almost 10 years, this is the type of thing that Customs Border Patrol does when they want to develop a profile. And We've been getting calls, we've been getting emails from all over the country. And the two things that people are saying, the first one's heartbreaking. Do you think I should deny my religion so that I can get into the country without being hassled? That's heartbreaking. And the other call, calls we're getting is, you know, they a I'm a Muslim, and they asked me the same thing, and then they had a list of questions. Where do you pray? What imam do you practice with? What do you read? What religion uh, do you pray five times a day? Um, are you a member of Jarit something or other? I can't remember the exact some name. Sects, some, a yeah. sect, you know? Uh, blah, blah, blah. And the list goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. So I don't care what custom says. I couldn't, nobody believes for one second that these two people, especially the Ali's, could be separated like this, questioned like this, and then it's just an accident. This is not possible. So we're here with the Ali's. Um, uh, Muhammad Ali's father, your father was born Cassius Clay. Muhammad Ali would later change his name after joining the Nation of Islam. Many news outlets initially refused to use his new name. The debate over his name even extended into the ring. During a famous 1966 interview with Howard Cosell, Muhammad Ali accused challenger Ernie Terrell of being an Uncle Tom for refusing to call him Muhammad Ali. You continue to be unafraid of this man. Yeah, uh, I'd like to say something right here, you know. Cassius Clay, yes. Why do you want to say Cassius Clay when Howard yes. Cosell and everybody is calling you Muhammad Ali? Now, why you got to be one of all people who's color to keep saying Cassius Clay? Uh, Howard Cosell is not the one who's going to fight you. I am. <laughs> you uh, it's really you... hard on yourself now. Well, why don't you keep the thing in the sport angle? Why don't you call me my name, man? Well, what's your name? You told me your name was Cassius Clay a few years ago. I never told ago. you my name was Cassius Clay. My name is Muhammad Ali. You uh, just acting just like an old During Uncle that fight, uh, Muhammad Ali repeatedly tormented Ernie Terrell by screaming, What's my name? What's my name? Um, I'm wondering, Muhammad ibn Ali, which means Muhammad, son of Ali, Muhammad, um, what do you think your father would say at the airport in Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood, um, if he were stopped as you were? I'm a Muslim. That's my religion. My name is no longer Cassius Clay. If you ask another thing, it's my religious belief. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know at, at what point they they understood that you were the son of an American icon of of someone who's revered throughout the world? I, well, yeah. <laughs> Did you tell them? Yeah. Yes, I actually told them uh, my father is Muhammad Ali, but it didn't speed up the process. <laughs> I think it made things a lot worse. <laughs> well, you know, they, had, you know, I've had pictures of me and Muhammad at the airport because there were travelers asking for autographs, and I said, "See, this is me," and uh, it kind of cooled off, but still, they detained me anyway, and uh, it just, it's just. Are you planning to sue? We plan to take some type of action. I don't know if we're going to sue yet or not, but, but it's still in the air. Can now. I throw in a yes, comment? Yes, yes so. Chris. Yeah, um, yeah. First of all, don't you miss Muhammad Ali? Don't uh, you? I miss him. <laughs> but the Ali's have become the focus. We're getting calls, as I said, from all forms of Muslim organizations, all forms of support groups. And I believe, although they didn't ask for this fight, they, t they took on the wrong people. And I think they're going to become the focus and a rallying point for this struggle. Now, as far as a lawsuit, we're working on towards that. Obviously, we're trying to get everybody who is similarly profiled to contact us or to contact an organization that we can work with. And, and if anything, Muhammad fought for respect. That's right. 
Yeah. And so, it, so is his uh, wife and his son. We have to carry on the legacy. And we have to help others, because other people who are immigrants that have a problem, they don't have a voice. And we have to stand there and be a voice for them. You well, have to think about the Muslims, the citizens in the United States. They go make their hajj, like we have to do every once in a lifetime. You know, it's a practice that we do. And uh, they go make their hajj, and should they be worried about getting back into the country and exactly. to their well, families? It's well, it cannot be denied the Ali's are fighters. <laughs> I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Thanks so much for joining us.